Do you wait for everything to be perfect and lined up straight before you make a choice? How hard are you trying to get everything in your life right? What if jumping in and getting messy is one of the ways to find out what works for you? Discover how being willing to mess up can create the phenomenal life you truly desire. Get ready to quit judging and start embracing all of your messy adventures. Now, here's your host, self-declared messy living expert, Katrina Fava. Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Welcome. Welcome to Messy Adventures in Living. Thanks for joining us today. Um, today on our show, we're talking about relationships, all kinds of relationships with um, our guests, Juna Guter and Sabina Hildebrand. So the title for our show today is Relationships, a Maze or Amazing? <laughs> Do you ever find your do you ever find relationships to be a source of challenge in your life? Like going through a maze and trying to find your way through without a map or a key to how it could be better. Whether you're in a relationship or not, this radio show is for you. Let's face it, relationships are everywhere. We're connected to and relating to family, coworkers and friends all the time. Today we'll be giving you our top tips that work to get your relationships out of the maze of frustration and into the uh, amazing that your relationships can be, including the one with yourself. Hi, Juna and Sabina. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you for coming. I'm going to just introduce you a little bit. So um, Juna and Sabina are the creators of Synergy in Motion, which is, um, I guess, a set of coaching classes and products that help you to break free of stagnation, stress, limitation in your body and your life. Synergy is the interaction of elements to produce an effect that's different from or greater than the sum <clears throat> of their individual effects. And then motion is about action, the process of moving. So um, the in motion is about how Juna and Sabine bring their teachings to life to move you into creating from a space of greater possibilities. Uh, <clears throat> their motion together with your courage and willingness to act help you to create anything you desire in your life. Sabina is a catalyst and creator of possibilities. Over the past 25 years, Sabine's affinity for adventure has led her on journeys with consciousness and community living where many wouldn't dare to go. <laughs> um, she has led uh, in-depth training with the essences, living and teaching in the Finhorn Foundation in Scotland, studying NLP facilitating transformation game, transformation therapy, and access consciousness, among many other modalities. She is a presence of laser-sharp awareness. <laughs> yes, she is. Wisdom, kindness, and humor. <laughs> she is the catalyst that allows you to see your situation from a different perspective and change it. Juna is a mover and connector of possibilities, inspiring individuals and groups for 25 years in the field of dance, conscious embodiment and personal empowerment, she invites people into greater joy, ease, and communion with their bodies and their lives. She studied various techniques, including reflexology, psychotherapy, social work, NLP, landmark education, NIA, EFT, and access consciousness. She has an intrinsic capacity for allowance that sparks people into the greatness of being who they truly are. Since 2009, Juna has been working internationally as an Access Consciousness Certified Facilitator and since 2013 as a three-day body class facilitator. She is a dynamic force with the skills and kindness to facilitate with a gentle whisper. She invites you to explore uncharted territories, feeling secure and confident. What a great... I love all of that stuff. It's so <laughs> awesome, and it just like um, includes so many different, um, so many like such a wide range of capacities and different energies. And I just want to say, um, June and Sabina have been um, um, a, a very large invitation for me to step in, up in my own life. Um, and I'm really, 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 really so excited to have you guys on today. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> 
<laughs> and it's exciting <laughs> to be on your show. Life. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're talking about relationships today. And I was, um, right this morning, I was like, hey, it, um, like you said, this call is for everyone, right? Um, I think when we say the word relationships, it's really easy to think about um, like having a partner, having a significant other, um, but really relationships are everywhere. And, um, you know, if you're a, a mother or a daughter or a brother or a sister or a partner or a coworker, everything is about relationships. And I was thinking about that. I suddenly realized that I just um, rhymed off a whole bunch of roles. <laughs> I was like, hmm, that's kind of interesting. What so, roles yeah. did you rhyme off? I'm curious. Yeah, which ones? Yeah, which roles did you rhyme off as... Yeah, like um, the mother, the yeah, like you oh, know, what wife, you just did. girlfriend, yeah. mother, yeah, coworker, friend, um, yeah, all of those. And I thought, oh, those are all roles. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you tapped right into what our first juicy point is. Like there you go. Role, <laughs> roles usually describe a set of things that are expected of you to do, right? Like the role of the mother means A, B, and whatever, (laughs) blue, green, up, down. And a lot of people try to fulfill these roles and get it right in this relationship or in their relationships, right, with the roles, but doing the right thing in their role, they're trying to get it right. And this is what a mother should be like, and this is what a daughter should be like. And, I mean, where do we even get all of these? Um, notions, <laughs> you know, they're right. everywhere, and then we just pick and choose, but it's so random. Mm-hmm. And the problem with that is that those rules are defined by hopes and dreams, expectations, projections, everything that has nothing to do with the person that's actually in the situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah? And how do you expect something to work when you're not in it. <laughs> so, Good point. <laughs> and that's most people are missing in action in relationship because they're trying to fulfill the roles that they're in. I'm this as a co-worker and I should be doing this and I can't do that and um, I will never do this, and I will always do this. It's like it's a game of trying to fulfill something that has nothing to do with you or that situation that you're in. And in that search to fulfill that role, you get totally lost in the maze. Mm-hmm. Because you, you, you use everything outside of yourself as orientation points to find your way through. So you're starting to run in a maze that is certainly not the joy of your life and living. You're trying to fulfill something that only gets <laughs> mazier and mazier. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you would say that. Instead of allowing your life to unfold and being present with what is and redecorating your life and your relationships according to what works for you and what is actually required in this moment. Yeah, wow. I wonder if um, when you're talking about that, it makes me think of like the beginning of a relationship. So when you first meet someone and it's like really juicy and it's really your, um, it's really exciting. And then, you know, you know, what happens after that? Do we start taking on roles instead of being present? Like, what you just said like are you you know are you more present when you first meet someone uh, you know your barriers are are dropped or maybe not like sometimes some of us put up a bit of a front but um you know is it that we're more present in the beginning and then we start to take on this role and we become more and more missing in action or <laughs> more and more <laughs> deeper into the maze and, well i wonder that's that's great and i i wonder it's about the presence but i would add that you are being you, are you being you more in the beginning of a relationship? And it's like, it's often the being that you are and the being that that other person is, is what brings you together. Like you're, you're attracted to the being and how much of you were you, you know, at the beginning of a relationship, how much 
more me was I, you know, just asking yourself that and how we um, we become less than us when we jump into the role. And it's what we really loved and enjoyed about our partner at the beginning, and then we start making them wrong for that very thing that we actually really liked. So <laughs> another part of what we wanted to talk about is just um, embracing the difference. And, you know, often it's that difference of the being that, that we are that brings us together, and it's exciting because they're kind of the same, but they're kind of different, and, you know, what could we explore together? But then over time we start saying, oh, well, you're not fitting my ideal. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, just yesterday I saw um, something that um, Dr. Dane here posted. Um, so Dane here, for any of you who don't know, is the co-founder of this modality called Access Consciousness. And yesterday I saw that he posted something on his Tour of Consciousness videos about um, having like a fantasy or having a um, like an ideal about you know when did you decide as a child what your life what your future was going to look like? And he talked about um, having this ideal and then um instead of creating your future you just kind of start taking people and plugging them in so like how much are we doing that in relationships right you have this ideal of what a relationship is, is going to be like that you decide when you're quite young you know based on whatever your parents or the storybooks or something and then instead of asking questions and creating what you what would be a contribution to your life you go oh that person fits this round hole and this person fits this square peg and people who don't you just kind of go oh sorry you don't fit any of my holes see you later <laughs> yeah that's, exa yeah. that's exactly yeah. what we interesting interesting choice of words i'll just say it there. <laughs> i'm just moving on here <laughs> Um, this is exactly what we mean with roles, right? And most of those roles are based of fan on fantasies, expectations, projections, and all sorts of things that you have decided are true and real at some point in your life. Mm -hmm. So all it's, uh, we we too work with the tools of access consciousness, and one of the tools that we're using is the clearing statement. In case you don't know what that is. It's a bunch of short uh, short words that don't make any sense. And if you want to find out more about it, you can go to the clearingstatement.com. And here we go. So what we do is we ask you a question, bring up an energy, and ask you if you will destroy and uncreate it all. And you can say yes or no. And then we clear it for those who are willing to clear it. So looking at all those uh, fantasies, expectations, projections, rejections, separations, judgments and separations that you have with relationships, let's clear them. So everywhere where you are holding expectations, separation, projections, judgments and rejections in place to create your relationships from, will you destroy and uncreate all of that? Yes. yes. All right, one good that battle. <laughs> You want me to be the podpocker? Right yes. Did that online podpock shorts, boys and beyonds, and that's the clearing statement. Great. Um, so I think on that note, we will take a break and then come back and continue our conversation. So we're uh, going to go to break. You're listening to Messy Adventures in Living with myself, Petrina Fava, and um, my guests, Juna Guder and Sabina Hildebrandt. When we come back, we will continue our conversation about relationships. Stay tuned. Do you wait until all the traffic lights are green before you get in your car? Of course you don't. You do. Are you waiting until you have everything perfect to begin living? Most of us have learned not to take any steps until we have all the information to make the right choice. What if the opposite is true? What if it's choice that creates awareness? Are you willing to make lots of messy choices so you can begin to see the possibilities that you didn't even think existed? Listen for Messy Adventures in Living radio show with self-declared messy living expert Katrina Fava every Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 Central, 7 Mountain, and 6 Pacific on A2Zen.fm. How much more expansive would your life be? If you were willing to get messy with your choices. 
What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? You're listening to Messy Adventures in Living with Petrina Fava. To participate in today's show, please call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, in Canada 613-800-8736, in the U.K. 033-0001-0625, or you can Skype us at a2zen.fm. You can also ask questions or comment by email by sending to Petrina at PetrinaFava.com. Now, here's Petrina with more Messy Adventures. Hey, welcome back. You're listening to Messy Adventures in Living with myself, Petrina Fava, and my guests today, Juna Guter and Sabina Hildebrandt. Um, we would really love to play with you on the radio. Um, it's super fun to take calls. So if there's something that you would like to talk about or a question you would like to ask us, um, you can give us a call. Uh, the numbers, again, in the U.S. are 815-8800-8255. In Canada, 613-800-8736. And in the U.K., 33 one 0625. You can join us on a to zen.fm in the chat room. Just click on the link at the top of your screen called chat room and log in. You don't even have to write your real name. You can type in some funky cool name. Um, or you can email <laughs> if you're shy. Or you can uh, email us some questions. We would love to play with you. So before we went to break, um, we were talking about uh, relationships and um, roles and how we uh, we were talking about uh, the fantasies that we kind of create really early on in our lives or the projections and the expectations and then um, how, you know, when people don't fit that uh, or we try to make people fit that and then it starts to, our relationships start to become a maze. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, go ahead. So we we cleared some stuff with the clearing statement right before we left. Right. One one other thing that I also was going to say is that we talked about the beginning of a relationship and how we maybe are more ourselves and then we start getting into the rules and somehow that's when the maze opens up and we get lost and interesting dynamics are being created. So a lot of times when people start a relationship, they have that sensation they have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Right? So it's like it's a new adventure. You haven't found that your fantasies might not be fulfilled and the peptides are raging through your body and it's all good. And then you start establishing a story together that connects the two. You're establishing the rules with each other that connects with you you with each other, right? And it, your relationship starts to solidify out more and more and more and more. And suddenly you have to lose something, that which you made so significant and important. It's important that we celebrate our anniversary. We always go to this place. We always say good night at the end of the day. We always do those. We never do this. Can you see how that is the beginning of so building the walls of the maze. Yeah. Yeah. So how do we change that without um, uh, without uh, cutting off or without being unwilling to ask for what we require? One of the most powerful tools is 
at night before you fall asleep to let go or destroy and uncreate everything that you have identified with, everything that you made solid, all the roles and all the expectations that you have made real. So every night you can destroy and uncreate them all or let them go, just go big, out press and let them go if you don't know the clearing statement. If you do know the clearing statement, use it. It's very powerful. But the main point is that you choose to let go of those roles and those expectations, those projections, etc. Yeah. And you know what? I, I just want to... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Of, yeah. of, of, your, of, of yourself and the other person. It's also mm-hmm. of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the first time I heard that tool. Um, so for anyone who's not familiar with Access, there's this tool called Destroying and Uncreating Your Relationship Every every Day. Um, and I remember my brother told me about that when he, when, he, when he first introduced me to bars. And we were talking about our relationship, my relationship with my brother. Um, we really have this really cool relationship. Um, it's been fun. We contribute to each other. And he, we were talking about us, and he said, would you be willing to destroy and uncreate our relationship like because we were talking about like past lifetimes together and really cool stuff like that and I remember when he said it I was like oh, no <laughs> I was like no because I love it like I love that we have this cool thing like why would I want to destroy it and create all of that past stuff all of our connection to each other and I mean I get I, I get it now but do you want to talk a little bit about that and like how at first maybe when you hear something like destroy and create your relationship people might be like what do you mean like why would I want to do something like that yeah I mean the thing is you want to like destroying and uncreating everything in the past and everything that it's what binds you together what kind of what makes you have no choice so would you rather have no Mm. choice in a relationship or total choice and whenever you're bound you know, by a past connection, um, you know, past lifetimes, whatever, you are, y- you have limited choice. And y- can you get that energy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's a, it's a limitation and it's really, it's hard, yeah, when you enjoy it. And that's, that's the kicker, that's the biggest hook is when everything is going great and it's wonderful and then we ask, will you destroy it, uncreate it? Well, what if something even greater can show up? So that's the other part. So if you destroy and uncreate all of your um, connections and ties to it and really let go, what can you let go into that's even greater than what you could have ever imagined possible? And then you actually have choice. Do I want to, can I play with my brother? Can I be with my brother? Can I actually contribute to him? Can I receive contribution from him? Um, rather than having to be bound to do it. And I, I mean, I'm going to make it more real with a fairy tale. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like when you look at fairy tales, right, mm-hmm. where the hero goes into a situation where they could collect something and they gather up the gold, they gather up the gemstones, they fill their pockets and they really weigh themselves down and it's precious stuff. They thought that's actually what they want. But it, what it does, it weighs you down. And you can never get where you really choose to want to, to be, right? So that's what we do in relationship. We gather up the gold. We gather up the gemstones and all those precious, precious things, and we're holding on to them. And it weighs us down and doesn't allow us to be who we truly are in the moment because we have to keep holding on to those old precious things instead of enjoying them and knowing that they had and they contributed to our lives and then they create with us all the time and being open to what can we actually create here now together like with your brother instead of celebrating just the past allow the past to be a contribution to you and maybe ask, okay, what can we create now together? So it's moving from connecting based on what has been in the past to creating your future together in every moment and having a blast with it because you're getting the best out of yourself and out of each other. And how much fun could you have instead of just being happy about the past to also create a future together? Yeah, 
I, that's a great, I actually, I lo- thank you. I love that analogy. You always have such great analogies. I like that about the, the coins in the pocket. That's great because what if you could enjoy them and then put them down and see what else? But I, And I, I think in relationships especially, we often decide um, that this is the best we can have. You know, we find someone when we're like, oh, my God, this, this guy or this girl is just the greatest. And I, I don't know how, you know, what did I ever do to deserve you? Like, I can't imagine anyone better. And then how much of that is a limitation? Um, because we've already decided that it doesn't get any better than that. And and also not even just with your, like, with your other, you know, your enjoyable other. But I see it with children as well. Best like, I see ever, right? the, best the best mom, mom ever. Mom. Or, like, kids are the best thing ever. Like, it's the best relationship ever, the best love that there could possibly be. Um, or, like, I see sometimes new moms, like, posting stuff about um you know, babies and, like, cuddles with their babies. And, of course, those things are just unbelievably awesome. But it's like, wow, you know, it just doesn't get better than this. And it's like, wait, but what if it does get better? You know, like, it actually, it can get better. Um, So, like, there's, in so many ways we've decided, like, this is the best we can get, and then the doors just close. And it's not only... It does like this is as good as it gets. It also mm-hmm. doesn't honor the other person, because how much mm-hmm. do you change alone in a day, in a week, in a month, mm-hmm. in a year? Are you the same person that you were last year? Oh my God, Probably no, not. not. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And when you have decided this is so, this is the best, this is as good as it can can get. You're holding yourself and the other person in that role. And totally missing what is different, the new gems. You're missing the new treasures because you're holding on to the old one. And and that's the the whole limitation with projections. Like you you project that at them, and then you you really it's like you create a screen through which you see the other person, which isn't true. Like the fantasies that that Petrina that you were talking about. It's like how much. Is it a fantasy when you look through the, a screen created by your projection? And it can be a positive fantasy or a negative fantasy. Um, and then what happens with, when you project and expect, you separate you from you and you separate you from the other person and you reject you and you reject the other. So the expectations and projections always create a separation, which is impossible when you're an infinite being, but um, you know we we drive a wedge um, in between, and then we wonder why we're so upset with the other person. Well, we've created this um, fake separation through the expectations and projections. And what would it take to be able to just really be present with what is and celebrate um, everyone in their diversity? Yeah. Can you talk a, um, a little bit about, I think I touched on it before, I just want to bring it up again, like um, allowing, celebrating people's diversity and not having projections and expectations and really seeing what's in front of you while also asking for what you require Um from someone who is in your life or like how can people know when having this person in their life doesn't work for them anymore so like how does that how do those two things work together so having allowance for for people and um you know destroying and creating a relationship every day and while also honoring yourself and saying hey you know what this doesn't work for me Okay, yeah, that taps into. In. Can can fair. I just say one quick thing yeah. while it slips before it slips? So there's something about need. Like, how much are we making that we we need our partner for something, right? Ah. And and that need thing it creates this heaviness. And again, it's not really true. Um, it just it creates um, you know anger, resentment. Whenever you need something from someone, they start to resent you. You resent you from for needing them in that needy way, whereas, you know, what could you create um, in your life that would um, fulfill that for yourself? 
in a different way you mean like besides besides expecting yeah, it from like, this other person yeah so what if you were needless of all, your partner your mom your dad your kids um what if they were needless of you and we found like i mean this goes kind of advanced but it's just yeah we're everywhere that you made um made yourself needy for someone or something um, creates that, again, separation where if you can be all of you and ask them questions like, okay, what would it take to generate and create this in my world? And then, you know, what contribution could my partner be to my life? What contribution can I be to their life? So that whole question of contribution and source, that was something else that we are going to bring up today as well after break (laughs) great yes after break so we're going to go to break and then we'll we'll continue to talk about relationship and source and need and a whole bunch of other juicy stuff so you're listening to messy adventures in living with myself katrina fava and my awesome guests juna guter and sabina hildebrandt uh stay tuned we'll be right back do you wait until all the traffic lights are green before you get in your car of course you don't Are you waiting until you have everything perfect to begin living? Most of us have learned not to take any steps until we have all the information to make the right choice. What if the opposite is true? What if it's choice that creates awareness? Are you willing to make lots of messy choices so you can begin to see the possibilities that you didn't even think existed? Listen for Messy Adventures in Living radio show with self-declared messy living expert Katrina Fava every Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 Central, 7 Mountain, and 6 Pacific on A2Zen.fm. How much more expansive would your life be if you were willing to get messy with your choices? What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? You're listening to Messy Adventures in Living with Petrina Fava. To participate in today's show, please call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, in Canada 613-800-8736, in the U.K. 033-0001-0625, or you can Skype us at a2zen.fm. You can also ask questions or comment by email by sending to Petrina at PetrinaFava.com. Now, here's Petrina with more Messy Adventures. Hey, welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Messy Adventures in Living with myself, Petrina Fava, and my guests, Juna Guter and Sabine Eldebrandt. So before we went to break, we started to talk about this um, concept of a need. Um, and uh, just when we were going to break, I was just starting to think about all the places that this all starts, right? I think since I've, I've, since I've had kids, I've started to really pay attention to um, – uh, a rate, um, sorry, song lyrics. There's something about oh, um, yeah. listening to the lyrics and songs that I've really become so aware of how early we, st- like I remember listening to love songs as a young kid and how much that actually formed my idea of what a relationship was supposed to be like or like reading something in a book, but also music. And like there's so much about like how I need you and um, I would be nothing without you and like, um, 
you know, you complete me, my other half. Oh, my God. <laughs> She's like, ah, so much need. <laughs> so, like, yeah, it's huge, right? Like, how much do we buy this idea that when we can't be all of that for ourselves? And what if we could have someone that we could just enjoy without needing them to fulfill something for us? So, I'm going to take this a little bit different because okay. uh, or the key word that you said that we have someone that we can enjoy. One of the biggest dynamics that kills every relationship is the fantasy of the one. Yes. And the one is always not you. <laughs> and you have the one that you can enjoy. You have the one that will fulfill all your needs. You have the one that you, whose needs you will fulfill exclusively. So exclusivity is a big killer in a relationship. And I'm not talking about um, not having sex with anybody else. It's more excluding everybody else, including yourself, to be a contribution and to receive. Well, what, can you say that again? <laughs> yeah, please say. <laughs> Excluding everyone from your relationship, including yourself, yeah. to contribute to you and to receive from your relationship. So we're Everything that brings ourselves. up, can we destroy and uncreate all of that? Yes. <laughs> right, wrong, right, well, good, bad, all nine, pop, 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 pop. <laughs> So what would it be like instead of being like exclusive, being the exclusive source for each other? If you would celebrate your own difference and each other's difference and everybody's difference and played with contribution instead of you have to do this for me, you can say, hey, I really desire this. I wonder who can contribute to me. And if that happens to be your partner, great. If it happens to be yourself, great. If it happens to be somebody else, great. Mm -hmm. So with your kids, for example, what if you didn't see yourself as the exclusive source for your kids to make them happy? What if you trusted them that they're very, very powerful beings and they can just throw a smile to somebody and they will just melt and <laughs> do or be exactly what they require them to do? <laughs> ah! You had to go there. <laughs> ah! Everything that brings up for me. <laughs> Destroy that. So, yes. Yeah. No. Exactly. Yes, I will. Adventure. What's that? What did you... I just... It's a pretty messy adventure, what we're talking about. It's pretty messy. <laughs> <laughs> it is messy. Yeah, you guys are sneaky. Yeah, so, no, but when you were saying that, it was like, but wait, I want to be the one. Oh! <laughs> so, and how much how much do you limit you mm -hmm. and imprison or incarcerate your children to be the source for you by having that exclusivity with your kids? Or with your partner. Yeah. Everything that brings yeah, up, can we destroy and uncreate all of that? <laughs> yes. Do not run good, bad, all nine pop up shorts, boys and beyond. Yeah. Wow. wow. So how many? How many? Com how many definitions, commitments, promises, and oaths have you given to be the one who saves, the one who nurtures, the one for everyone? Or the one who needs the most. <laughs> yeah, and everything that is, will you revoke, recant, rescind, reclaim, renounce, denounce, destroy, and uncreate it all? Yes. Right, wrong, good, bad, all right, wrong, good, bad, all nine, papa, shots, boys, and beyonds. Yeah, wow. Mm -hmm. There's a lot if of I... energy on the one. Yeah. The one, yeah. And, 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 yeah, like, not just, not just, you know, the your partner like in so many relationships I think I mean the whole mom kid thing is huge in my universe right now too so like I'm so aware of that right like um as a mom it's like when you said when you said um like what if your kids could find what they require somewhere else and it was like I could see where 
some things I'd be like, yeah, yeah, sure, here, go ahead, you can find that somewhere else. But there's something about being the source of nurturing and caring and love and kindness that I'm like, I, I saw where I was unwilling to be that. It's like, no, wait, not that, you know? Like, so, yeah, it, it filters through all kinds of relationships. So what if we just did a little, little change? We're changing mm-hmm. it from the source to a source. Right, a one a possible source. You are the one, but not the only one. Right. When we say <laughs> you are the one, but not the only one, what we do is when we say this is the one, we put only in there, and that's what ah. eliminates the receiving and the contribution contribution from everybody else. That's yeah. exclusion, right? That only is exclusion. Exactly. That's so cool. everywhere everywhere where you have made yourself the one or somebody else the one, an excluded contribution and receiving or eliminated that totally, will you destroy and uncreate it all? Yes. All right, run good that all nine pod box shorts, boys and beyond. And how much and more I- fun c- could you have being messy and receiving and contributing according to the one that you truly be. Mm. And everything that doesn't allow that, will you destroy and uncreate it all? Yes. yes. Right, run good, bad, all nine, pod, pod, shorts, boys and beyond. It's like, um, you know, the messy adventures in living, I just love that title, like the messy adventures of coloring, like outside the lines. Where could you, you know, allow your children to receive outside the lines or contribute outside the lines of all of the definitions and roles that you've decided and we've all decided that this is how it should be. And everything that is, will we destroy and uncreate it all? Yes. Right, wrong, good, bad, all nine, pod, pod, shorts, boys and beyond. So what I want you to do right now before break is just tune in. How much do you see yourself as being actually a contribution Perceiving how much your contribution to your life, to your living, to the world, your body, to the world. And how many years do you have under your belt (laughs) Um, creating, generating, living? And to trust yourself that you will be creating whatever it is you're choosing, but you will be creating. It could be crap. It could be brilliant. Right. Yeah? So what happens is that a lot of people lose that awareness that they can create, Mm -hmm. and then they have to make someone else the one and start being secure in that. Yeah. That's to that need thing. Like I, I need someone to fulfill this. But what if your like the needs of your body are actually, you know, a lot more simple than what we make them? And you know, all of your needs. Like what if it was, like what can I contribute to my life and my body today? What can I receive um, from my body and my life today? And your relationship. Yeah. So how much more? I, yeah. You go. Oh, you're breaking up. Yeah, you're breaking up. So how much more fun could we have with this? How much more playfulness would be in your life if you actually came from that point of view of what contribution can I be today in this moment to my relationship, to my body, whatever it is that you desire to contribute to. And I wonder where I can receive from today. That yumminess that I know is possible, that I just stuck into the box of relationship. Mm-hmm. Sounds like are that you, was are you the there, end Katrina? of <laughs> Yes. Okay. Cool. Okay. Oh. <laughs> right. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we will talk some more about relationships, and maybe we'll touch on bodies. So uh, we're going to go to break. You're listening to Messy Adventures in Living with myself, Katrina Fava, and my guests, Juna Guter and Sabina Hildebrandt. 
Stay tuned. You're sounding Do a you lot wait better until for all the traffic so lights are green before you get in your car. <laughs> of course you don't. Are you waiting until you have everything perfect to begin living? Most of us have learned not to take any steps until we have all the information to make the right choice. What if the opposite is true? What if it's choice that creates awareness? Are you willing to make lots of messy choices so you can begin to see the possibilities that you didn't even think existed? Listen for Messy Adventures in Living radio show with self-declared messy living expert Katrina Fava every Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 Central, 7 Mountain, and 6 Pacific on A2Zen.fm. How much more expansive would your life be if you were willing to get messy with your choices? What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? You're listening to Messy Adventures in Living with Petrina Fava. To participate in today's show, please call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, in Canada 613-800-8736, in the U.K. 033-0001-0625, or you can Skype us at a2zen.fm. You can also ask questions or comment by email by sending to Petrina at PetrinaFava.com. Now, here's Petrina with more Messy Adventures. Hey, welcome back. You're listening to Messy Adventures in Living with myself, Petrina Fava. I have two great guests on today, uh, Juna Guder and Sabina Hildebrandt, talking all about uh, relationships and uh how we can move from them being a maze into amazing. So when we went to break, we were just starting to touch on, um, we started to talk about bodies. And I wonder if um, you wanted to touch on that a little bit, uh, uh, Juna or Sabina. I know, Juna, you um, have been um, doing a lot of work with uh, bodies for a really long time. Do you want to talk about relationships and bodies and Mm. Oh, that's a huge, a huge topic. Um, it is, I know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, wow. Do you have a specific question? Yeah, um, just wondering, like, um, about, you know, projections and ex- expectations that we have with our own bodies and, like, um, you know, do we start doing similar things that we do with the people in our lives with our bodies? Like, how much do we pro- have... Uh, a fantasy or an expectation of what it what our bodies are going to be like or what our bodies are going to do for us or what we need our bodies for and then how that kind of starts to turn into a maze um, right. and how we can be more present yeah with our bodies yeah exactly and um, everything that brings up the story and uncreated right from <laughs> yes. all night bug bug shorts boys and beyond um, what was I going to say uh yeah, I mean the relationship with your body, and and the whole the whole word, word relationship implies separation. So yes. that's actually the definition of relationship. So how much are we separated from our bodies um, through the projections and expectations of what we think um, should show up or how it should be, and what would it be like to, as in relationship with everything, um, to to really be asking questions like body like actually talk to your body you have your being and you have your body which a lot of people don't really know the distinction they kind of think it's all one 
messy adventure. They don't know that there's a being and the body. And starting to have the being ask questions of the body, like, body, what do you actually desire to eat, to wear? Um, who would you who would you like to sleep with? And not meaning that you have to follow through on everything, but just start to get that that dialogue with your body and ask, you know, your being, how can I contribute to you today, body? And ask your body, body, how can you contribute to me in my life today? So there's just a whole bunch of, you know, richness in the conversation that can occur with body and being. And again, it's, it's not really separate. It really is a dance. And I, I talk about it like a partner dance, like a really great partner dance. Um, and, you know, it, great partner dances like the tango actually need some practice, right? It doesn't just happen. Um, you don't just get out on the dance floor with a partner and there's a beautiful dance. There's a beautiful dance that starts with oh, recognizing there's a being that has a consciousness and your body has a consciousness and how can we... Um, you know, contribute, be a mutual contribution to each other. So yeah. that's kind of a in a nutshell. Right. Um, and if you want more information and if you want more stuff, um, you know, take a three-day body class or a body process class, take the bars, and all of that gets you into um, more communion and connection, a deeper connection with you and your body. Yeah, great. Thank you. I just wanted to kind of put it out there, like put the bug in people's ear about um, relationships often include ourselves and also our bodies. So um, yeah. thank you for that little that little tidbit. Um, and Duna said, yeah. if you want to have more information, we actually played this the last night with the show and what we're going to do. Yeah. And we chose to create a clearing loop for you guys, everybody who's listening here based on what we've hey. been talking so you can go to synergy in motion in one word uh, dot info slash loop and just let us know that you would like that um, loop and we will send it to you as soon as we have created it and also on synergy in motion dot info you find out a lot more about who we are what we do all the crazy adventures that we're on and there are some yummy ones coming up <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much, you guys. Do you have any um, classes or anything else that you wanted to talk about quickly that you have coming up? Um, yeah, we have a five days um, to change your life coming up, um, and it's really fun. We did this last year right over, uh, so December 30 to January 3, like right over that whole, you know, letting go of the old year and bringing on the new year. So we have that in London, Ontario. Um, and what else do we have? Yeah, other local things. And then body classes coming up in um, different parts of Canada coming up soon. Awesome. So, mm -hmm. um, you will we, you will find all of that on our website, synergyinmotion.info. Yeah. yeah. And if you want the loop, add slash loop. <laughs> cool. Perfect. Thank you. Awesome. And, and I just want to let people know. Oh, sorry. You go ahead. Oh no. Go ahead. I no, I just wanted to let you were talking about a five day, so I just wanted to um, add for anyone who's in the Toronto area, I'm hosting um, a five day to change your life as well that's coming up this week with the bars, kicking it off with the bars class on Thursday. I'm hosting um, Christine McIver in Etobicoke um, for five days. And you can Fun. find that information yeah, at patrinafava.com. So, yeah, what uh, we have uh, about a minute and a half left. What do you guys want to? Um, wrap up with about relationships and or maybe some questions that people could um, start to play with. Uh, yeah. The main thing is take out the seriousness out of relationship. What would it be like Aww. to play more, that have sound more like fun? fun. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And open yourself up to receive. Ask yourself, okay, what else is possible here? Where, Whom else? What else can I receive from today yeah great Juna any any final thoughts or questions yeah I, I mean one of the things we, we just touched on I mean we, we did even have we had points we, we covered some of them but one of the things was the embracing the difference and just one little tip when you start to judge your partner thanks for playing with so us on Messy Adventures in there, Living <laughs> thanks Fata for joining us everyone will return next Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time 8 a.m. Central 7 a.m. Mountain and 6 a.m. Pacific on A2Zen.fm.
we'd love to have you join us again. Until then, have fun creating your phenomenal life, mess and all.